This is a special presentation of the Thai Cats Audio Network. Hey, Thai Cats fans, it's your digital host, Louis B, and I'm very pleased now to be sitting with the quarterback of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Dane Evans. Um, Dane, I want to get to all the offseason last year, you know, getting set for this season, but first I want to know just how you're doing. I know you got a baby on the way. How are you, yeah. Nikki and uh, Murph doing? Yeah, we're, we're doing good, man. We, uh, we actually have everything that we think we need. Obviously, we don't know everything we're going to need, but everything off our baby registry, we got that. The last thing we have coming in on this Tuesday coming up is the mattress for the crib. So once that comes in, we think we got everything we need. Obviously, we're going to need more diapers and stuff like that, but we're feeling pretty good about it. Uh, I joked uh, about this with uh, with Dylan, you know, when he had his kid here. Like, now he's tied to Canada forever. Yeah. You're, you're going to be in the same way where no matter yeah. what, you're going to have this little Canadian baby girl yep. that's going to keep you to – does that – does that – mean something to you? Yeah, no, it definitely does. Um, culture is something that's super important to me. Um, and I mean, you know, I'm Native American. I, I think a lot of people know Nikki is Hawaiian and Filipino. Um, so this baby will be born in Canada and then she'll eventually be a U.S. citizen. She'll be on the tribal role um, for my tribe, which will help tremendously. And she'll also have Hawaiian ancestry like background too. So. It's, she's going to be getting it from all directions, so um, we're, we're really excited about it. Uh, that was just a, a huge part of what has been, I'm sure, a whirlwind off season. Uh, but before we get to that, let's talk about last year because I, you, know, you mentioned it a couple times throughout the season, you'd never really dealt with an injury in season before like you suffered in game. Safe to say the last year, all things considered, the adversity you faced was probably the most you've ever faced in your career? Yeah, um, I've been playing tackle football since I was five in Oklahoma. Like, there's no, there's not a flag in Oklahoma, you just start playing tackle. So like your coach has got to pick you up off the ground. It's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, I've been playing since I was five. And I mean, I've torn my MCLs before. I've separated shoulders, but nothing to keep me like out of a game. Um, and then last year in the middle of the season, it was just hard, man. Finally, finally got the the nod, kind of, to go play. You know, be the starter. Um, I felt like I was playing pretty well, and just freak tore my oblique. You know, against against Toronto. I still don't know really how it happened, um, but tore it pretty good. It was it hurt. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, and then it was right the road to recovery. And and I, I was in the training room every day with Maui and Claire and Curtis. And I we were, we had a really good plan. I came back uh, a couple weeks before thought I'd be able to um, and then finally got battled back and then got to play again and then the neck injury that that one that one sucks um, it was no one's fault um, nobody messed up on the play it was just that was the guy I had to get through to get in the end zone and um, we just happened to hit heads I mean felt like my head was up and sometimes that's how it goes in football and and really man I couldn't I'll tell you this because, I mean, it doesn't matter now, but I really couldn't even move my neck left or right until the day before the Grey Cup. So if that wasn't the Grey Cup, I probably wouldn't have tried to go, but it's the Grey Cup at home in Hamilton. And like, I did everything I could to try to go. Um, I don't think the Winnipeg guys were like out after my neck or anything. I think it was just another one of those tackles. They just kind of hit me high and that's how it happened. And it just couldn't, it couldn't hold up, man. When when I hit the ground in the Grey Cup, I couldn't feel my legs. So that's not a, no. that's, you never want it, that for anybody. Exactly. Too. And then like, I can just remember being on the ground and like all this was running through my mind. Like I knew Nikki was pregnant at the time. Like I knew, like I'm going to have a little one. Um, like I want to be able to enjoy that too. Um, so fast forward to now, everything's 100% good. The oblique hasn't bothered me really since I came back. Um, my neck is 100% healthy and I'm good between the ears too. So how do you process a season like that? Like, how do you go through, like, is it different than a normal off season? Because I'm sure you have your routines that you do every off season where you take some time off or you work on your body or you get things right. But in a season where you hadn't played for 18 months, yeah. you play such a, 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 a short, so many games in such a short amount of time, you get hurt, you're dealing with injuries. How do you process a season like that? You need some time to just like decompress. And uh, that's what I did. So like, obviously now I'm like into the more normal off season, like routine of throwing and working out. But uh, I didn't even think about football or, or like even try to like think about anything except just enjoying life and enjoying my family until like really the new year. Um, when that came around, I felt like I had enough time to decompress everything, the free agency situation, like 
with what Hamilton was telling me here. And um, I feel like it all worked out, but I think the biggest thing was just being able to relax a little bit. We went to our farm in Oklahoma and that helped me a lot. Um, so I just needed some time away, honestly. How, how much did having this baby on the way help you in that though, with the distraction of, okay, I don't have to think about football. I can paint the baby's room or I can yeah. do that. How much of that helped you this off season? Yeah, it's helped a lot. Um, like I said, I, I mean, I joke all the time, like Nikki's obviously the one carrying it, right? And she's really starting to feel it now, but I'm super stoked. Like I cannot wait to meet this baby. I, she's moving so much right now. Um, like it's to the point now where you don't even have to like touch Nikki's belt. You can just see her moving. So it's like, she's right there, but not here yet, you know? So I'm ready for her to be here. It's been a great, a great thing for us. Um, we both have wanted to be parents for a long time. So I think it helped in ways that I didn't even know that it was going to help. How did your perspective on football, on life change when Nikki told you? I mean, you were, cause you were, you said at the Grey Cup, you knew. So you're in the middle of a, you know, a, a great cup run for the second straight season. Your wife tells you she's pregnant. How does your perspective on life, on football change after that? Yeah, so she actually told me, we found out, I think it was the week after I tore my oblique. So it wasn't like necessarily in a dark place, but I was pretty upset, right? Yeah. And that's probably the ultimate like pick me up that you could ever get. So like you said, my whole mindset changed, I knew that I needed to stop being selfish about my oblique. It's just a torn muscle, it'll heal, right? I'm just trying to see how fast I can get it to heal. But really there's bigger fish to fry. There's more important things on the table now. Um, like I gotta be a, a father, I gotta be a better husband now. And uh, I think that's really the spark that I needed and the pick me up. And I, that's honestly really what got me through a lot of the middle of the season, especially being on the sidelines, seeing us kind of go up and down, up and down, like in every game, but couldn't figure out how to win one and then win a close one. And it just sucked not being out there. And um, I think that's really what helped me get through it and be ready for the end of the season. And you're going to be a girl dad too. Yep. And you got a pretty good role model to look at when it comes to girl dads in Coach O. Yep. How have you talked to him? How has he talked to you about this impending bundle of joy you're about to have? Because yeah. I'm sure you know he's a girl dad to three. And yep. um, you know what kind of advice have you sought after from him? Yeah, I mean, he kind of joked with me and he said that it's almost like guaranteed in your contract when you're a CFL quarterback that your first daughter or your first one will be a daughter like it's a it's a weird set if you look at it a lot of CFL quarterbacks and especially over the years have had either all girls or girls first so he was joking with me saying he knew it was going to be a girl even before we did um, and really he just told me to really enjoy everything um, in the in the birthing process obviously be there for for Nikki do whatever she says like you're you're the ultimate hype man in that situation so um, we've been taking classes and stuff like that so I think I'm ready for that too. Obviously, I mean, there's no there's no better way to know than actually getting thrown into it. So uh, I'm just trying to enjoy it all and just support Nikki right now. All right, let's talk about football. Uh, do you feel training camp has already started? Like it doesn't start for another couple of weeks or a couple of days, but I see you out there. I see you out there with your teammates. I saw you in Texas. Has training camp started? Yeah, to me it has. I mean. It may be not like officially the training camp, but like I'm kind of viewing this time as like, you know how the NFL does like mini camps and yeah. stuff like that. This is kind of like the mini camp time for me. Me and Tommy have been meeting, well, all off season, but now we're like really starting to ramp it up with all the other offensive coaches being in office, getting to know those guys, getting to know how they coach. Um, and I think they're getting to know me and some of the other guys that are here. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, we went down to Texas. Um, second year in a row we've done that. and. Uh, on Sunday of that week, we basically had the, the entire starting lineup there. Um, a couple guys couldn't make it. They had some family things come up, which is cool because it wasn't mandatory or anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was encouraged by how many guys wanted to be there, um, wanted to show up and get work in. We, all, we had a good time too. I mean, we all stayed at an Airbnb together. So that was fun, obviously, like not football wise, just like getting to know the guys on a more personal level and enjoying each other's company. So. Um, I, I think we're ready for the season. I was just about to ask, because it feels like in a situation like that, coming out of a season like you had with so many returning guys, it feels like the not football stuff is almost just as important as what you did on the field. Yeah, no doubt. Especially we have so many guys that have been up here and kind of know like the tie cat way and stuff like that. So I think that stuff off the field goes super far on the field because Obviously, you got to know your assignment. You got to know how to run the route. I got to know what I'm doing. But like when you really know about the guy next to you and the guy next to him, and like you know his wife, his 
parents, what they do, like everything becomes more real. It's not just a game. Like you actually want to perform for him, for his family, like help support him. And uh, I think that's one thing that this game specifically does that I don't know if really any other games do. And I think that's why I love this game so much. Going into last season, for the 18 months prior, it was Jeremiah or Dane. Jeremiah or Dane, who's it going to be? It was every day in training camp. It was every week during yeah. the season. <laughs> How much of a distraction was that, honestly, for yeah. you? Yeah. No, I mean, it sucked. I'm not going to lie. Like, and I don't mean it sucked as in, like, we were mad at each other over it. We were both just, like, over it. You know what I mean? Like, we knew what it was. Everybody in here, you knew what it was, but I know y'all had a job to do, too. Um, I didn't ask. I never no asked. Doubt. I never asked. You Dave. never did. I never that's why asked. you're the man, Louis. But I know, like the TSN guys, like obviously they're that's their job. That's what sells tickets or whatever. However you want to phrase it, it just got old, honestly. Um, and like, you know how we are. We both, to us, it really didn't matter. Like we wanted to win games. If if I was holding the clipboard, I was holding the clipboard because I knew that if that week I wasn't playing, Jeremiah was ready and he earned it. And all I wanted to do was win anyway. And I think vice versa. If I was playing, he knew that I was ready and I had earned it. So um, it just kind of got old to us, the back and forth. But, I mean, when free agency came, we had a good talk. Uh, talked to him the other day about the rule changes. Now you have two quarterbacks on the field. And we uh, we, we would I'm always. Sure, I was about to say, I'm sure you had dr uh, drawn up some plans uh, if we, you could have done that. We probably had 30 plays last year for it. But obviously it wasn't legal. Um, so we missed that one by a year. Uh, but, no, it, it just got, just yeah. got old kind of. And, I mean, to that point, why do you think it was so hard for people to believe that there was no drama? Because, like, like you said, I was here. I yeah. know. I saw it. And people yeah. were keep telling. It was like, well, if you don't believe that they're fighting in the locker room or that they don't like each other, why was it so hard for people to believe? And I'm sure yeah. people are going to watch this now and still not believe yeah. it. And but yeah, why do you think that is? That's up to them. I mean, everyone yeah. can make their own opinions. But I think it was hard for, like, outsiders to believe because it really had never been done efficiently before right like usually when two quarterbacks play throughout a year a guy a guy is actually hurt can't play comes in the backup comes in does his thing and then they either just give it back to the starter or he gets hurt so the start so it was just kind of an unforeseen thing or something nobody had ever really seen before and I don't think we I mean we deserve some of the credit me and him but really the team and the guys in the locker room and the coaches they deserve a lot of the credit too because never once throughout last season was there a divide of like guys wanting me to play secretly or guys wanting him to play secretly like everybody knew what it was everyone was pulling the same rope we're all on the same team and i can't thank the team my teammates enough because me and him when we talked at training camp last year that was our number one thing was like we don't want this to cause a divide because it's like we're just one position on the field it's so much bigger than us and, I mean, nobody's half-assing it for the other guy when you're a B-team, exactly. A-team, like, and it's such, when it builds that unity. And that's more of a team philosophy anyway. That doesn't matter if you're A-team, scout team, you know, fifth man. Like, right. it doesn't really matter what you're doing because that's how this team operates. Right, and that's what we talk about all the time. I love that we call our practice, like, roster guys up here the waiting room. Because, like, if you're in this facility, you can play ball. We all know it. It's just sometimes it's not your time to be active. It's not your time to be a starter. It's just... That's how, that's how it rolls sometimes. But when you get that call, like, we expect nothing less than you to come in and do your thing. So, like, a guy like Donnie J, who last year, you know, was the, the scratch, you know, on game day yep. or, or didn't get in, and then he shows what he can do. Yep. When you get to see that through their eyes, right. as somebody who's starting, as the guy, what does that do for you to when you're playing with these guys out there? Yeah, I mean, it makes you just, like, obviously it makes you want to play your best for when, when they finally get to play. But it makes me respect and love him even more, man. I mean, just what he had to go through last year, um, with, like you said, the healthy scratches and like, will he get to play? Like ratio issues came up and uh, it just sucks because that's another part of this game that some people don't realize, especially, doesn't really happen for us because we don't count against the ratios quarterbacks, but all the other position players, like that's some things that you don't yeah. think about. And the mental like fortitude and resolve of Don to like, he was ready every week. He could have. Yeah. If it would have worked out ratio-wise, he could have went any game we needed him to. So just to see him be ready, have a great attitude. Obviously, there were some tough days, but have a great attitude, be ready every week, and then step in and do what he did in the playoffs. Like, I mean, that kind of gets you excited for this year coming up. 
How nice has it been? We're here in person talking face to face. Uh, probably not this part isn't your favorite, but being out there with Alden Darby and being able to kind of meet with guys outside of the locker, maybe in yeah. the weight room, there's no tears, there's no different classrooms. Just yeah. how, how nice has that been, the normalcy we've been yeah. to start the season with? It's fantastic because, like, I mean, obviously we all went through some stuff over the COVID period, um, but it's just great. I mean, this is how it should be, in my opinion. Like, we're, we're just guys enjoying each other's company, not thinking about anything else. Like, it's just, it just makes everything feel, like, more, like, normal, I guess, yeah. is the way to say it. Do you feel pressure heading into this? Like, do you feel like there's pressure on you heading into this season, considering the way the last two have ended? Yeah, um, I mean, I always put pressure on myself, um, not in a negative way. I just expect a really high level of play from myself. So I always put that same pressure on me, no matter what the previous season did. So, I mean, I guess you could say there's some, but uh, I'm just excited to like get back to doing it, man. It's This is what I was like put here to do. So when the season comes around and training camp comes around, I'm the most happiest guy in the world. Like. I know this is what I was put here to do. I go back to training camp 2018, and you know I think you were the third quarterback on the chart at the time. There was some high-profile guy ahead of you who I can't, uh, yeah. for the life of Might me, remember right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there was Vernon Adams Jr. on yeah. the depth chart as well. Three of the quarterbacks who were at camp in 2018 are yeah. going to be are projected to be starters in the East heading into this season. What do you remember about that camp? Those guys. How is that going to help you this season? And just how much of a different quarterback are you than that guy? Yeah, um, I think I've grown a lot. Um, I think I understand this game a lot more. I definitely understand this offense a lot more now. Um, and yeah, that was a crazy training camp because we were all obviously talented, but all so different too. Like yeah. you couldn't just say like two guys played similar. Each, each guy was different. And so as a young guy, like that was my second professional training camp counting the one in Philadelphia. Like coming in to see that, like I just kind of like, I was sitting in the back because really I was the fourth string guy. So I knew when I got in, I was trying to just do my thing and let them know I can also play ball. Um, so I, I think I learned some things from them on the field, off the field, um, some things not to do also. Um, but it was it was a cool experience and like I, I still really can't believe we had like all the guys like that. And then don't forget we had. Bryant Moniz, too, who did nothing but throw for like 6,000 yards every time he played at Hawaii, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that was that was a fun training camp. That was truly that fun. Was, that was fun. That was, I mean, that was a circus. It was a bit no of a doubt. circus, but it was also kind of a vote of confidence for yourself at the yeah. time that, you know, June had seen something in you as the fourth string guy, you know, to move Vernon out and then to move Johnny out. Yeah. Was that kind of your first vote of confidence in this league that thought, okay, maybe I'm I'm right where I belong? Yeah, a little bit. And also I think um, the preseason games, like getting to play. And there's a kind of crazy story, I don't think I've ever told anyone about that, of how I actually got to play. So like we knew it was going to be Jeremiah and we had already traded um, uh, VA at that point. So Jeremiah, we knew he was going to play for a couple drives. We knew Johnny was going to go in for a lot of drives. And that leaves me and Mo. Well, our quarterback coach at the time, like we were pretty even through camp. So he was like, y'all just flip a coin and whoever picks it gets to play. And thank God, I, I don't even remember if I picked heads or tails, but I won the coin flip. And I got to play and I'm here now. But long story short, I think the preseason games really helped my confidence too. Cause like going against our defense, it's tough, man. We have the best or one of the best defenses every year. And they're throwing stuff at you every day that no other defense is gonna show you. So when I finally got to go in against Toronto that year and Montreal and like actually have success, I was like, okay, like I, I can do this. I don't know if I'm ready to be a starter yet. Like I'm going to prepare like it, but I, I can play in this league. And then obviously 2019 happened and now I'm here. Yeah. To that point, um, you are the starter. There's no conversation. There's no debate. There's no right. questions from the media. You are the starter. Has your mindset changed at all with that? Nope. I prepare, like I said, ever since I've like known that I can do this, I've, I'm, I expect myself to be the starter all the time. So I'm, I'm ready for it, man. Like I've, I prepare the exact same way I would. Um, got a little bit more like in the, I don't want to say in the playbook with Tommy, but like we've customized it a little bit better. Um, we kind of came in this off season and kind of like wiped the slate clean of a couple things, but also kept some things that we like. Brought things that I did at Tulsa 
brought things that he's done in the past, 2015, 2016 back. Um, so I'm excited to see what we got. I think we have ex like some really good stuff, and especially for the guys we have, I think, I think we're playing to our strengths. That year under the belt for, for Pappy, for Tim, for Dunbar, yep. um, having Chernowski back, having Ungerer back, Braylon healthy. Yep. When you look at your weapons, I said this going into last season, and obviously injuries had a role, but when you look at the weapons you have, is there enough to spread the wealth? Yeah, no doubt. I, my coach at a college at Tulsa, Philip Montgomery, told me you can call yourself a quarterback, but you're basically a point guard. So my job is just to distribute it, right? Yep. Like, I know we have weapons out there, I'm not paid to run around and do what they do. I'm paid to get it to them. And uh, I think as a quarterback, it's it's like advantageous to have as many guys. Do I know how some people can say like, well, you got too many people. I don't I don't think you can ever have enough. And the way you know the way we use everybody, like it might not be actually throwing the ball to everybody. It might be bringing guys in the backfield and handing it to them. But are we trying to win the game or what? You know what I mean? Yeah. So we're gonna play to our strengths for sure. All right, before I let you go, I've got to ask your opinion on the recent rule changes. And, of course, the hash marks is the big one for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, Randy Ambrosi in town last week for or a couple of weeks ago for his road trip. Uh, and he had mentioned that the hashtags might help offenses. Is that something you agree with, or how do you feel? How do you interpret the rule changes? Yeah, so the hash is moving in. I'm a little indifferent. Obviously, everything that happened is for the offense, so I'm not going to complain <laughs> about it, right? Um but I just, I'm not so sure that it's gonna do what everyone's saying. I'm not so sure that there's gonna be just this like assault on the field side corner now that everyone's saying, because you gotta, you gotta look at it like, if you're bringing the hashes in four yards, now you have four more yards in the boundary too. So it's really gonna put the will and the boundary half in, in a conflict. Um, luckily we have the best will in the game. So it's not gonna affect us, but I'm just saying like, there might be some more field throws um, but go back and look at us the last two years. We've, we've been throwing it over there. Like we're, I feel like us and maybe one or two other teams would actually do that. So it'll obviously help because I guess that throws like shorter now, but you also have more room in the boundary too. So um, it'll be interesting. I'm, like I said, I'm indifferent. They're obviously in our favor, so I'm not gonna complain, <laughs> but uh, I'm just, I'm curious to see how it all shakes out. Before we go, how are you a better quarterback in 2022 than you were in 2021. I'm going to be healthy, man. That's if I can stay on the field and just use the guys we have, we're going to have the best defense in the league, no doubt. We're going to have solid special teams, and for me it's just about executing, being out there, uh being available and doing my job. And I know I don't need to come out and be the MOP week 1, right? But by the end of the season, like I think if if I play how I can play and we execute how we execute, I think we'll be right back where we've been. Are you someone who manifests things? Are you, you, you brought up MOP. Is that on a, on a goal list is somewhere? Or I've, is always, that... I've always been kind of like, obviously individual awards are great, but I've always been like your team's success will lead to those things. So like if, if we're winning games and we're really rolling, I think, I mean, somebody on this team will be the MOP. We'll probably have 10 all-star, you know what I mean, total yeah. team-wise. But – but I don't look at it like I got to be them. I got to throw for 6,000 yards. I got to do what it takes to win and then win the next week and win the next week. And if that takes throwing for 300 a game, that's what it takes. If it takes handing it off 30 times, that's what it takes. And I'm good. as long as we're winning, I'm happy. And all that other stuff will come to the, just come. What do you want to say to Ticats fans who are watching or listening to this? Buy your tickets, man. <laughs> come, come see what we got. Um, I think training camp will be open this year. Question mark. I, uh, question mark, question yeah, mark. I don't know. So if it, is, if it is, come on out. <laughs> yeah. If it's not, we know y'all are going to be there. Preseason game, um, the, the one at home. Um, we know y'all will probably go to Toronto just like always. Um, but just come out, support us, man. I think we're going to have an exciting product. Um, I think you're going to see some things, see some guys, especially when they come back for a year or two, like I've already seen them. Um, there's going to be some differences, and they're going to help us out a lot. Well, Dane, I know you're a busy guy. I know I'm right in the middle of your pre-training camp yeah, training camp. So right. uh, thanks for doing this. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks, man. man. Appreciate you.